In this video, we'll discuss what is aphasia and provide examples of how to most effectively communicate with your family member with aphasia. What is aphasia? Aphasia is an acquired language disorder. It is estimated that there are 180,000 new cases of aphasia per year in the United States. The National Institute of Deafness and Other Communication Disorders estimates that approximately 1 million people, or 1 in 250 in the United States today, are living with aphasia. Some common causes of aphasia are stroke, traumatic brain injury, brain tumors, surgery or infections, and progressive neurological diseases such as dementia. What is Wernicke's aphasia? Wernicke's aphasia is generally characterized by an individual being able to produce connected speech and using sentence structure that is relatively intact but lacks meaning. People with Wernicke's aphasia typically also have impaired language comprehension and poor repetition of words or phrases. We'll use this picture for reference in the next examples. A person with Wernicke's aphasia may look and sound like the following. Tell me what you see in this picture. Well, there's the computer guys there, and they're riking by the computers, and these guys over there, they're, they're driving by the Klein, and up here, he's got the, the oh with the Kleins and the the ah, oh, the, the climbing, um, and wow, such a good climbing. And over here, we have this, and he is driving by the Klein, and there's the Bim Bam here, that Bim Bam guy. And over here, she's got the arm, and she's looking for the, the Klein. She really loves that Klein flying. And she climbs the, the wine, and those are the guys, those are those, computer guys with the buys. Okay. As you can see, a person with Wernicke's aphasia may be able to speak freely. However, their speech may lack meaning. People with Wernicke's aphasia may have difficulty accurately responding to simple questions. Do you have blonde hair? No, I don't. Do you have blue hair? No, those computer guys. Are we outside? Yes, I think that's nice. Are we at a library? No, I think so. Are we at a hospital? Yes, thank you. Okay. Do you eat an egg before you cook it? Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Is a mouse smaller than a lion? Um, I don't, a lion, it's good, and they go by the fly. Thank you. As seen in the video, individuals with Wernicke's aphasia may have difficulty accurately responding to questions. People with Wernicke's aphasia may also have trouble following directions. Pick up the plate. Pick up the glasses. Pick up the sock. Pick up the washcloth. Pick up the glasses and the plate. Pick up the washcloth and the sock. The washcloth. That's good for looming. Put the plate on the washcloth. Um, I think that's nice. People with Wernicke's aphasia may also have difficulty participating in conversations. Where are you from? I live in Plessy Van, up by the Mittens, by the Mocktons with those guys. Do you have any hobbies? Oh, I love computers. Those computer guys um, with those pies. And I love to go around outside and throw those with those guys. And oh, are they fun. Do you have a family? Well, I have those six guys. And I have the one that I mattered. And well, those six guys with that, well, that one guy, oh boy, is he fun. He runs around a found and he, he laughs at me. These videos highlight how a person with Wernicke's aphasia may communicate. 
They may seem very confident in what they are saying. However, their responses do not always align with what is being asked of them or is out of context for what is being asked. As you heard, the patient is speaking freely, but they are using a mix of real words, made up words, mixed up sounds, or unrelated words. An individual with Wernicke's aphasia may not be aware of their communication difficulties. People with Wernicke's aphasia may have difficulty understanding language based on the severity of their diagnosis. For example, the following task may be challenging for a person with aphasia. Understanding yes-no questions, following directions, participating in conversations, or comprehending stories and lectures. The overall goal is to increase communication. This can include spoken language and communication via actions and pictures. Here are some tips to help you communicate with your loved one. Use simple and direct phrases. Limit distractions, only one person talking at a time, and make sure to turn off the TV or close the door. Ask yes or no questions, or provide two choices. Use gestures, pictures, and or objects when communicating to ensure comprehension. Encourage your loved one to use gestures, objects, or pictures to communicate with you. Be patient. Encourage your loved one to keep trying to communicate, even if it's frustrating. Make sure not to assume that there is 100% comprehension, and make sure not to talk over them. It is anticipated that communication will improve over time as you learn how to most effectively interact with them. Thank you for watching this video about aphasia. We hope you find this information helpful as you learn how to help your loved one through this challenging time. If you have any questions or would like further information or resources, please be sure to talk with your speech language pathologist, doctor, or rehab educator.